Sunday, breakfast, 9 o'clock. There will be no classes, but there will be a breakfast here, and then services at 10. So the 10 o'clock time will stay the same, and we'll just do a breakfast in, in place of the classes in the back. So come for that. Invite your friends. It'll be a great time, great fellowship time before our Easter service. Uh, comment cards, make sure you do get those filled out. Um, if you do not get the the group text, make sure you get that, put it on the cards, and we'll get that to Mike and Trista so they can fix you on that also. I don't have anything else this morning. Does anybody else have something that needs to be announced? If not, let's all stand at this time and we'll have just a direct our minds in prayer. Father, we're just so thankful that we can do this day. What a, what a wonderful Sunday. So many young people here. Um, there's still a few people out with sickness, God, and that kind of thing. Uh, just pray that you be with them and let them return to us. Uh, we ask you to be with Grant for his lesson today and what we learn and uh, just apply whatever he teaches to our life. Thank you for everything, Father. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come let us sing for joy to the Lord, let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and exult it with music and song. For the Lord is a great God, a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks above him, and the sea is as he made it, and his hands for the dry land. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord, let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and exalting with music and song. In moments like these, I sing out a song, I sing out a song to Jesus. In moments like these, I lift up my voice. I lift up my voice to the Lord, singing I love you, Lord, singing I love you, Lord, singing I love you, Lord, I love you. In moments like these, I sing out of
his body
Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask that you bless and this mutual as we remember the blood that Jesus spilled for us. In your name we pray. Now we'll pass it around the collection plate. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we know that everything that we give to you, you do to help people to further your name and to spread the great joy that you give us. Lord, we just ask that you bless us in your name. Amen.
Creed's uh, our church family. Now next week we're going to take a little break. We're going to uh, change it up and then we'll go back. But uh, you covered the schedule change next week, right? Remember that. So anyway, our church family. The church. I think it's very important that we talk about the church. I think it's the church is an exciting place. It's a place to grow spiritually. It's a place that, that I think some people that have had that church family that's had no family always goes, but I just love the church family. The family is so important. There were different views of the church as we talk about being passed out. We essentially, we were the non-essential, and the liquor stores were the essential. Figure that one again. Uh, we know the importance of the church. We know that it is essential. It's God's purpose. And all this was to use the church to display the wisdom, his wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was his eternal plan, which he carried out through Christ Jesus, our Lord. There's an importance on every single member of the body. We're all different. We talked about that. And, and, and the uniqueness of each one is so important for a church to function well, having every member that is, that is participating. And then we see the, the setup. God's got his plan. And, and, and he says, here's how I want to grow this church. And here's how I want this church to function. And he says, now, these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. First, the apostles. Well, we have that opportunity today to read the word of God that those apostles spoke. It says the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors. <coughs> That's the elders and the teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and to build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. I want you to look at that word. It's so important. Unity. It's very important. We can all be different, but there's a unity there. And then we talked about there's a cost. There is a cost to being in the family of God. And essentially what Jesus said was this. Then he called the crowd to him, pull on the side and said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their faith for me and for the gospel will save it. We see there's a cost. The cost is your life. But what greatness did Christ come by coming here? We see the beauty of eternal life. And then last week we talked about the unity through love. By this all will know. The world will know. Okay? A new command I give you. Love one another as I've loved you. So you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And then we closed last week saying, bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has agreements against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Understanding forgiveness. We're going to talk about this. I will say this one topic. I talk about it a lot. Is the one where a lot of people will call me or talk to me and say, I've never looked at it that way. Or I don't agree with you here. Um, Forgiveness is something that's so important. There's a lot of misconceptions about forgiveness. We're talking about forgiveness, once again, in context to the church family. Okay, Forgiveness is something so very important. And once again, it brings unity. I don't know if you've ever done it, but I've done it several times. I've offended someone. I mean, has that ever happened to anybody? Uh, you know, so, it, most of the time, it wasn't on purpose. Okay? Sometimes maybe it was, but anyway. Yeah, most of, but this happens in our life. We're humans. It's going to happen, okay? And, and so how do we as a church family, how do we as a person, as a, as a godly believer, deal with that? Listen, I don't know if anybody's sitting out here that, that has a forgiveness issue because something has happened in their past or with someone that there's just never, ever, ever been anything that has come together to have this forgiveness happen. Okay, we're going to talk about that. Misconceptions of forgiveness. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgiving each other just as in Christ, God forgave you. How does God forgive? It's a declaration. It's not a feeling. Now listen, it's very important. 
If we think that we, we have to have the feeling to forgive someone, that may not ever happen. Okay? It just may not. There's got to be a declaration. It's got to be like, like God said. It says, I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remember your sins no more. He promises that. He promises not to remember. He's going to forgive. He's going to let it go. He's going to pass it over. As far as high as the heavens are above the earth, so is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Now, as we dive into this forgiveness, I want you to understand. God's love, God's grace, and God's love is for everyone. Okay? Know that. Put that in your mind right now. God's grace, his son, was given for everyone. Jesus died for everyone. Do you agree with that? I think everybody would. God loves everyone. Would you agree with that? I think we have to. I think it's, it's, it, we're, we're going to close with that. But God, God said we are commanded to love our enemies. Okay, so, so God's grace and God's love is for everyone. Now let me ask you a question. I want your mind to think about. Does God forgive everyone? Just think about that for a second. Does God forgive us? Now, I want you to, in your mind, think about this. But the answer is no. It's not. Forgiveness, listen closely, is not unconditional. If forgiveness is unconditional, God says, I'll just forgive everybody, and there's no need of the cross. Okay? Forgiveness is conditional. And as we dive into this text, I want us to remember that. Forgiveness is conditional. For us to be able to forgive, a condition must be met. For God to be able to forgive us, a condition had to be met. What was that condition? I want you to go with me to Luke chapter 17, 3 through 5. It says, if your brother or sister once again, in context of this church family, sins against you, rebuke them. If they repent, and I want you to remember that word because that word is going to be very important as we walk through this. If they repent, forgive them. Even if they sin against you seven times in a day, and seven times comes back to you and say, I repent. You must forgive them. Now, we read that, and we think, what? That wasn't just once, but that was seven times during the day. I love what the apostles told the Lord. Increase our faith. That is going to take a lot of faith. Not once. But when somebody comes back for the seventh time of the day, tell me what you're going to tell them. Seriously, tell me what you're going to tell them. If you really would have meant it, right? I mean, that's just the way we know. We've got to be careful with that. So, do we forgive people who repent? Absolutely. But the goal behind forgiveness is to stay unified, to stay together, to be as one. This is the church, okay? Forgiveness is a promise. When we say that forgiveness is a promise, that means it is a transaction between two people. So in this passage, the forgiveness is conditioned upon the person's response. In other words, repentance is a must for forgiveness to be obtained. Okay? We'll go with that one for a second. The message of the gospel includes this. We see this with God and his people. It says, in repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in the name of all nations beginning at Jerusalem. It says, in the past God overlooked such ignorance. Now listen closely. But now he commands all people everywhere to repent. Why the need of repentance? 
Why is it important? Now listen, we first, before we can understand on how to forgive people and how to work out relationships, we need to understand our relationship with God. The only reason we have a relationship with God is there was repentance that occurred. Okay? I want you to think about that for a second. Would you agree with that or not? I'm not talking about His grace, His Son coming to the cross. I'm not talking about Christ loving you. He does that for everyone. I'm talking about forgiveness. To obtain forgiveness was repentance necessary? Yes or no? Answer that question in your mind. Yes or no? Okay. Matthew 18, 15 through 18 says it this way. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault. Just between the two of you. Well, we could go on and on about that. It's usually never the case. It's, uh, you take it to everybody else before that. Okay. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three lips. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. If they refuse to listen, see if the church treats them as a pagan or a tax collector. Now, the scripture is talking about the body of Christ coming together and working through problems. But repentance is always necessary. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Okay? So what about the passages about Jesus' teaching when it seems like maybe he's not teaching that? He's telling us just to forgive no matter what, forgive and move on, and what about those scriptures? Now, I want you to take the scripture, because a lot of us view it that way. Luke 23, 33 to 34, it says, when they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him here. Now, Jesus is being crucified. It says, along with the criminals, on, it says, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, now look closely, Father, Forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. And he divided up his clothes by casting lots. So some may say Jesus unconditionally forgave those who crucified him. Now I've always said this as we study scripture. We really always need to take the Bible as a whole, okay? You need to look at other scripture as we interpret scripture. So, if, if this is the case, if, if, if God is saying, I want you to forgive all these people no matter what, what was the need of cross? What was the need of repentance? What's the need of faith? If you look at uh, Romans 10, 14 through 17, it says, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? How can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are saying, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news? Okay? Faith comes by hearing, and hearing through the word of God, or the words of Christ. Christ is, 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 is praying for these people. Forgiveness, what he's wanting is their hearts to be open to accept the message so they can be forgiven. We'll see that in the text. He was praying that they would be brought about to a position of repentance. And guess what happened? You remember after the crucifixion? There was a day of Pentecost coming. What happened after that? Look at Acts 2.23. It says, this man was handed over to you, this Peter preaching, by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of a wicked man, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. Peter is hammering these people because they crucified Jesus Christ. At this point, they would die in their sins. Forgiveness has not happened in their life. Forgiveness is there for the taking, but it's not happened yet. But look what takes place. In 36 of the same chapter, it says, Therefore let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom 